No surprise that Amazon has a gigantic warehouse. It spans 2.3 million square feet across four floors, and the center includes a highly automated warehouse space. For comparison, the Empire State Building in New York City is 2.7 million square feet. Located in Phoenix, Arizona, this warehouse handles the bulkier items that won't fit in a regular tote. It opened in 2011 and has over 1,000 employees who work 24-7 to ship various items, including furniture, hockey sticks, lawnmowers, and everything you can find on the seemingly endless Amazon website. With thousands of orders rolling in every hour, Amazon has no other option but to equip their warehouses with highly efficient people and the very best in tech to aid them in the process. Today, we take a look inside the Operations. You can go on the app or the website and buy things with a single click, and it all comes down to how efficiently the people and the robots in this space function in order to get you your new iPhone or garden hose or board game. The building, which is about the size of 36 football fields, has employees using technology to find the items required, determine which size of box to use for packaging, and where to ship it. Amazon likes to keep its working process a secret from the public, giving you almost the illusion of magic when your box ships the same day you ordered it. But make no mistake, the work that goes into delivering that product is long and intricate. Its fulfillment machine is finely tuned, not just to serve Amazon itself, but anyone else who wants to sell their products on the site. That's right, more than 2 million third-party vendors also use this space. Amazon keeps its brand front and center in these listings, but these sellers are still crucial to the company's future. They now supply about 40% of the items sold on Amazon annually. And last year, third parties sold more than a billion items worth tens of billions of dollars. So, the world's largest online retailer not only lets other sellers list their items on its website, but lets them outsource shipping as well. The warehouse contains two fulfillment operations working as mirror images of each other. This helps the center scale up or down depending on the volume of orders. The central mezzanine provides panoramic views of both sides of the warehouse. And and an impossible to trace web of conveyor belts and rollers move around items in yellow bins from one point to another, filled with goods destined for either the warehouse shelves or for customers. The inventory here is made up of merchandise small enough to be stored on shelves about the size of those at a typical library, which is exactly what this space is called. Each shelf is divided into cubbies, and each cubby has a barcode and an alphanumeric ID. Interestingly, these barcodes don't signify anything about the type of product in the cubby. Everything is just stored wherever it fits, and identical copies are stowed in spots throughout the warehouse. Sounds random and inconvenient? We get it. After all, when you're in a supermarket, you find all the toothpastes in one aisle, and there isn't a random cake mix thrown in there. You need order in a warehouse, especially one of this size. While it may appear chaotic, it's far from it. You've probably heard the rumor that Amazon warehouse workers, on average, walk 12 miles a day within the warehouse to fetch and drop things around. Well, that's no longer true, because identical products can be found all over the warehouse. A worker has to travel less to find the product you ordered. Randomness also helps with managing the wide range of items Amazon offers, because it helps save space. If you kept a dedicated section for toothpastes in the warehouse, and it wasn't being used because you haven't received a shipment yet, that usable space is just lying empty. It's more efficient to use any free space available. But then then, how do they keep track? Even if the product is a bit of a walk away, these warehouses are patrolled by robots that can pick up entire shelves and bring them to the worker working at a fixed station. All right, let's go through this step by step. Let's say you place an order for a fog-free shower mirror from the store Shavewell. Shavewell ships its mirrors to Amazon, where they are stored in various locations around the warehouse. Trucks will arrive with boxes of goods that the workers open, scan, and put into yellow bins. The Conveyors route the bins to different parts of the warehouse, where other workers will unload them, scan them again, and then scan the cubby in which they are storing the mirror. This way, the computer knows
knows where to find the Shavewell mirror or anything else the customer has asked for. It's also worth mentioning that Amazon charges third-party sellers for shelf space down to one-tenth of an inch, and they also take a cut out of the order's ship. But in exchange, they also offer marketing and distribution services so you can focus on your business. So it's a fair deal. But back to your order for the mirror. Your order is funneled from Amazon's website to the warehouse to a handheld scanner carried by all the workers in the library. The scanners direct the workers to the nearest cubby where the ordered item is stored. This item is then picked, scanned, and placed into a yellow bin which is also scanned. It travels on a conveyor system to one of many pre-packaging stations where workers sort items into small slots on shelves with wheels. Those shelves are then rolled into packing stations where another worker packages the orders into cardboard boxes. The size of the cardboard box that has to be used for the item is also determined by a computer. Once packed, the boxes all head down to another belt to get labeled for the mailing address. Sealed and stamped, they're now ready to head down to the final chutes before being loaded onto trucks for delivery. In a way, the Amazon Fulfillment Center is like a giant robot. Amazon is looking into incorporating more robots into its warehouses. In 2012, they acquired the company that makes the robots called Kiva Systems for $775 million. Since then, it has deployed over 100,000 machines across 25 warehouses worldwide. Kiva's robots have taken Amazon's random organization strategy and made it even faster. The click-to-ship cycle, which is the time it takes to pick a product from the stacks, pack it, and ship it, was around 60 to 75 minutes when workers handled the process manually. But with the help of robots, the same job is done in 15 minutes. Warehouses equipped with Kiva robots can also load 50% more inventory than those without them. Still, human hands and brains are still the best tools for most jobs in the center. Currently, Amazon has maximum advantage over its major retail rivals, none of which were founded as tech companies first. At the same time, no other tech rival, and yes, we're including the likes of Apple and Microsoft, can come close to Amazon's physical, logistical advantage in retail. Unlike software, fulfillment centers aren't built overnight. This practice likely took years of work and trial and error, and competitors like Alibaba have little chance of entering the U.S. market when they couldn't even hope to replicate Amazon's insane infrastructure. For now, that superiority means Amazon is defining.